Hello, I would like to tell you a little bit about some of the work my group has done in the past with the MIST Center, specifically working on magnetoelectric nanocomposites for sensing applications. So Matthew Bauer was the main graduate student who worked on this. He got his PhD in May of 2019. And of course, my collaborator, uh, Professor David Arnold. So just to give you a little uh, overview of the, the presentation, first I'm going to give a, an overview about magnetoelectric nanowires, then talk about their implication or uh, their use as sensors, and lastly I will summarize our key findings. So in terms of magnetoelectric nanowires, so why are we interested? Well, no single phase material exists that has both a high permeativity, sorry, permeability, so the ability to be magnetized in an applied magnetic field, and a high permeativity, so the ability to be polarized in an applied electric field. And of course, as a material scientist, I'm interested in studying the size effects of these properties. And then lastly, through the MIST Center, hoping to implement these nanocomposites or these nanomaterials into real engineering devices. So when I talk about a magnetoelectric multiferroic, what I'm talking about is a multi-layer structure typically formed between a magnetostrictive material and a piezoelectric. So if you look at this, this cartoon here, if we have a magnetostrictive material, if we apply a magnetic field, that's going to undergo a shape change, which can then impart a strain on a piezoelectric, generating a polarization. So if you look at this cartoon schematic here, you can see that this, this magnetoelectric coupling occurs due to strain transfer across a shared interface. So if you want to maximize the interfacial coupling in the system, it may follow that you want to maximize the interfacial area, and that's a great opportunity for nanomaterials. So here we have some of our magnetoelectric Janus fibers. So we make these Janus fibers where one sem semi-cylinder of the fiber is one material and another is the other. So we use barium titanate as our piezoelectric and cobalt ferrite as our magnetostrictive. So this is these are some scanning electron micrographs showing that we can make these materials. Uh, here's X-ray diffraction data, again, confirming that we have barium titanate in the required tetragonal perovskite phase and cobalt ferrite. So now that we've made these nanowires, what can we do with them? So that gets us to magnetic field sensors. And this is a lot of the work, of course, that was sponsored by the MIST Center. So the first thing that we need to do is instead of just having these uh, uh, sort of nanofibers, well, how do we get more controlled breakup. So we have nanowires of a more uh, desired or say tunable length. And we can control this breakup by using different calcination or heat treatment regimes. And we do these in the presence of salt. And salt is there to prevent the nano, basically to fill the space between the individual nanofibers to prevent them from agglomerating together. And then once we have these, these nanowires, we can assemble them into elect, onto electrodes via dielectrophoresis. And then lastly, we can characterize the devices. So here's a, a schematic on the, the left-hand side here of a, uh, of a substrate where we can measure 20 rows of our nanowires in series at a time, or we can measure one row. And this is really nice because then this can allow us to individual 20 rows individually or all of them at once. And on the right hand side, you can see a zoomed out view looking at one of these arrays where these uh, dark specks are the, the nanowires that are aligned across those electrode gaps. And in the bottom right inset, uh, just above me here, you can see an individual, uh, one of these nanowires spanning that electrode gap. So once we assembled the, the nanowires into these arrays, we wanted to figure out, well, what is their performance in terms of a magnetoelectric uh, effect? So of course, if you want to look at the magnetoelectric effect, this would be the magnitude of the field, the electric field that's generated in response to an applied electric field. So, I mean, sorry, that's generated in response to an applied magnetic field. So this is really going to tell us about its ability to perform as a magnetic field sensor. So on the left-hand side here of our axis, we have the alpha, which is the magnetoelectric coefficient in terms of millivolt per centimeter per Orsted. And on the right-hand side, we're looking at device sensitivity. And now that's in terms of millivolts that we would generate and signal as a function of an Orsted of applied field. 
So uh, what we can see here is the lock-in magnetoelectric measurements as a function of bias field and frequency. Uh, and one thing you, you may think is, well, that's a little uh, curious that you have a zero bias magnetoelectric effect. And we attribute that to the self-biasing of the nanowires. Because they're these long, uh, skinny nanowires, we think that we start with a, a preferred uh, magnetization direction in the nanowire along that long axis. Um, the increasing magnetoelectric effect with frequency, this is attributed to the frequency dependence of the dielectric constant of the constituent phases, uh, mostly corresponding to a decrease in the leakiness of the ferrite as we increase frequency, allowing us to get the stronger piezoelectric response, or at least to have less loss. So another thing that we did is a zero bias magnetoelectric measurement. So what we did here is we, we took our nanowire array and we could rotate it within the coil in order to find the angle of minimum uh, induction. And then from there, what we could do is perform the following measurements where we could now measure the, uh, the magnetoelectric coefficient at the angle of, of minimum, minimum induction and then plus or minus 90 degrees. And you can see these plots here. Um, you can also see these red squares corresponding with our lock-in amplifier measurements. So we can see here that our, our device or our magnetoelectric coefficient is um, doing quite well. And we have anywhere from about um, 100 up to the thousands of millivolt per centimeter per Orsted. Uh, device sensitivity is shown over here on the, the right-hand side, of course, showing you what is that readout in signal in response to an applied field. So to summarize, uh, hopefully you saw in this, this particular uh, presentation, brief presentation that we have shown that we can electrospin these biphasic uh, Janus fibers uh, from ferroelectric and, and ferromagnetic precursors. Uh, we've been able to use these to fabricate magnetic field sensors. And uh, the, the one thing I, I forgot to mention is that these magnetoelectric coefficients actually of the nanowires are orders of magnitude greater than their thin film counterparts. And that's because we're able to overcome any clamping from a substrate mechanical clamping. And here I just wanted to, to show images. Uh, on the left is, is Matt Bauer, the PhD student, the former doctoral student that did a lot of this work, and then two undergrads in my group who also have contributed a lot to the electro spinning. So with that, thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email is listed here. Thank you.